Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so excited that you have joined us here today. Today on the podcast, we have Jessica Lane Vassman. Jessica is an internationally renowned, award-winning operatic soprano with 15 years of instructional experience and is currently pursuing her second master's degree in counseling psychology. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. And I should disclose that proudly I am one of your students. Oh, yeah. (laughs) One of the best. (laughs) And we met about how long ago? 10 years ago. I think it was. It was a decade ago. ago And never looked back. No. (laughs) Never looked back. And so now that we have both had so many twists and turns, in yeah. our journeys. I think that this is a really interesting time to come together and chat not only about those twists and turns, but also about how those twists and turns have led you here to this point. And no doubt there will be more twists and turns <laughs> after this point. But I want to really be able to unpack your journey, how you felt during your journey, and what, what, we've, what you've learned hmm And where we're going from here. Yeah. So I gave a little bit of an introduction, but like that is just, it doesn't even speak to like how amazing you are. All Whoa. of the, <laughs> per, all of the performances that you have done internationally, the awards that you've won, the international performing that you've competed for and done. I mean, I was there for a lot of it. You were. (laughs) And it it was so exciting. And so now being sort of on the other side of some of that, Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in hearing about, you know, your reflections and and how you can look back on your journey and all those transitions. So I'll leave that sort of open for you. Thanks. Yeah. So I started by pursuing an undergrad bachelor at Western right out of high school with six months of singing lessons behind me, threw myself into the deep end. You know, had some ups and downs with that, but really was like, okay, I'm in the right place. Stayed on there for a master's of music as well at Western and graduated with that at age 22. So here we are at 22, master's degree, young dramatic voice, which takes longer in the oven. And people keep telling me, you know, you're going to take some time. It's going to take time. But I didn't want to take time, you know, 23 ambitious kind of out of the gate and ready to go, right? So uh, to spare the all the tr- technical terms of voice changing categories, I started in one version of repertoire, ended up in another. Long story short, during all that time, I moved to Toronto and I had been teaching already in London, Ontario for, oh my gosh, I think four years of private studio lessons and was like, you know what? I really, I really love this. I really love teaching people to sing. So got on with Allegro Music, where I met you and mm-hmm. a couple other I taught at a three or four studios in Toronto and privately as well. Mm-hmm. And then kind of during that time was also auditioning, competing, traveling. And I was in Germany, New York, kind of making the rounds, doing it. And it's a real grind. It's a thankless job. It's a lot of really late, cheap flights by yourself. And then kind of coming into nearing up to 30 and being like, you know what, I'm married. I really want to start a family as well, which was something I'd always wanted to do and And then that's when things started to look different for me. And what I guess I skipped over was when I was 24, kind of moved to Toronto, I started seeing a therapist because there's a lot of pressure on me as a performer and just some personal things. And I was like, you know what, this is time to kind of explore that at this age, I feel ready to kind of look at that. And uh, through that, I was like, oh, wow, I really find this really valuable. Mm. I really love this. I'm really passionate about the process and how it works and how it makes me feel. And, And I actually at that time did apply to the Gestalt Institute in Toronto 
and was accepted on my application only, which I didn't know. I went in for an interview that I thought was an intake interview, like for the application. Mm. And they're like, oh, so when you start in September? And I was like, hold up. Oh, my gosh. This is too much. It's a fi- It was a five-year part-time program, mm. but it had really hard deadlines. Like, you have to be here for these seminars and you can't miss more than three days over five years. And as a young performer, I was like, oh my gosh, like I can't commit to this right now. Right. But it sat with me and I was like, you know what? I really do want to learn more about this and I really love it. So fast forward, you know, nine years or so, two kids still working, still teaching. At this point, I had a student, at, I have a student now at Juilliard and at U of T, like students doing big stuff. One works for CBC as an actor. Like, I'm like, okay, we're doing this. This is great. I love this. Running and- your own music school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of, you know, doing my own thing. And then kind of realizing, you know, I think I'm ready to go back to the therapy thing. The part I was realizing with my students is that the kind of most valuable things I was doing with them was empowering them to make their own decisions, mm-hmm. whether that was within, because I teach a lot, a lot of adolescents. I really, you know, the 12 to 25 is where I've done mo- the bulk of my work. And that's a lot of choice making yeah. in that time, a lot of growth, a lot of development, mm-hmm. right? Like just, mentally, physically, everything, environmentally. And I was really enjoying like just giving them the tools to make these kind of post-secondary, not post-secondary, do I want to sing? Do I not want to sing? Kind of, and just being there with them while they got through all of that. And I loved that. Mm. And while I loved teaching them to sing really well, I'd kind of gotten to a point where I was, it was really formulaic. And I was, I don't want to say I was getting bored. I was kind of getting bored. Mm. I was like, I know what I'm doing works. I can tailor it to each person, no problem. But I really want to keep going with this, kind of helping people move through these different phases in their lives. It's really exciting. It was really getting me going. (laughs) Day to day, I was like, wow, I love being here with them while they figure themselves out and kind of self-actualize and decide who they are and where they're going next. And it's just, oh, even right now, like I get so excited just talking about it. And that's so I was like, you know what? We're two years into this pandemic. I have little kids at home. What can I do? And I called my previous therapist, who's fantastic. She's in Toronto. And I was like, we've talked about this before. What should I do? And this was just like, a, like not a, fr- I don't want to say friendly chat because that's not necessarily ethical, but she was. Because an, an off the record phone call. Exactly. It's like, you know what? You know, I've always think that you would be great at this. And it's, it's been a bit of a balancing act, but it's, I'm enjoying it so much. Yeah. And I'm really like, really excited about moving forward from here yeah. with this. So that's kind of where I am now. And I'm still performing. I just finished a Hansel and Gretel and I still teach. I still teach three days a week and kind of have one toe in each pond. And it's I'm really enjoying that. I really love having lots to do in lots of different things. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Thank you for sharing all of that. And You're welcome. I think it's so important to just take a pause here, which is that to say that you know, when I started with vocal training, mm-hmm. I was, I think, 13. Right. And we met a few years later. I went through a few interesting teachers, as as you and I have discussed, which will not <laughs> become the topic of this recording. <laughs> but when you're going through such formative times mm-hmm. in your life, it's so important that you find something that you are passionate about, that you really enjoy doing with somebody you trust. Because for me, I always say the only reason I like maybe didn't need therapy was because I had voice. Right. And, you know, especially when you and I started working together because we were such a good fit and, you know, going through different teachers, different coaches, trying to find one that you just click with. Yes. And who understands the kind of theory that I wanted to train under, which was exactly what you were, were teaching was the most sustainable yes. kind of training so that it wasn't just like belting on day one. It's <laughs> it's really, really technical. And I'd be like, okay, Jess, more scales, more scales. You'd be like, more scales? Like, I've never met anyone who wants to sing so many scales. <laughs> and we breathing again? <laughs> I know. Right? And it's, and, you know, I think that that, you know, as I've sort of grown up a little, that's like, those are the, cho- that those are like really similar to other choices that I've made, which is like, slow and steady wins the race in a really, really sustainable way that protects your body, that protects your mental health, that protects your well-being, 
that protects your relationship with others because you're taking care of yourself. Exactly. And it was the same with the voice. And I think that the voice is such an important sort of like, not even just a metaphor, but learning. Yes. For how to take care of the rest of yourself. Exactly. Quick, in, because that this is, I think, so interesting that the vocal folds are the are one of the parts of the body that you don't need to survive. Mm. And so your body will hydrate at last. And so in order for your voice to be in tip-top shape, you have to take care of the rest of your body so well that there's not an ounce of need for it to become hydrated. And I think like what you're saying, it's a beautiful way to kind of learn to take care of yourself through the use of the voice is so real and physical and part of it's the voice encompasses who you are what you want to say what you have to say what you don't say Mm -hmm. and it's literally part of your body yeah and that was really powerful for me because it wasn't like so my parents were always like okay you always have to do an instrument you always have to like there has to be music there has to be something so I was in music lessons from forever yes and you know, we started with piano and then in school, you know, moving to like clarinet, then the sax and jazz bands and all this. And then I, you know, got to a point where I was like, okay, you know, I'm doing this stuff in school sort of because I have to, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't like resonating with me and I didn't feel empowered by it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, 13 year old me would never have used the word empowered, but they're like, you feel that there's something missing. Right. So I decided, okay, like I'm going to take, I'm going to, my voice. And so I did. And that, you know, on, on that note, no, on that, <laughs> and on that note, you know, like in, in terms of taking care of yourself and your voice and like your voice responds to anything that you do. Yes. So like when I came and it was, I was really stressed. It was like, well, I can hear it in your voice yeah. or, you know, I can't do what I did last week, or it seems a lot harder or this feels different or that feels different. So like stress, sleep, like everything. Nutrition, hormones, yes. environmental allergies. Like it is uh-huh. a barometer for everything going on around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think that I got so much value from participating in this from such a young age and loving it. Yes. And also having to deal with like the transitions and the frustrations of having a voice develop that and I couldn't see where it was going yes and I remember that like you know I'd been training with other people for you know five or plus years before I met you Mm -hmm. and then I met you and you were like oh wait you're not a mezzo no and so similarly to you when you thought (laughs) you were one voice type and then you're another one because you start to you start to resonate or try to resonate identify with yeah label yeah definitely right and then you're like no you're a, a full lyric yeah and I was, it, it's sort of like an, it's an identity shift. Yeah. And so for you, like, take me through some of these identity shifts that sure. you've been through and how you, how you felt through them mm-hmm. and what you sort of realized once you were on the other side. Yeah. Great question. So if we look at just voice sweet changes, I went into university at 18 And my teacher had been like, you're definitely a soprano. And I was singing this really tiny, high lyric Mozart stuff that if you knew me now, I certainly would never touch with a 10 foot pole. Not because it's not great music. It is. It just does not fit. So going in like that, I actually developed what was it called? Laryngeal tension disorder from singing soprano one in choir because I was holding so badly Mm -hmm. that my muscles got so tense that my larynx wouldn't draw. And I lost my voice for six weeks. I went to ENTs in Toronto. I went to doctors. And they were like, and it was finally the last person was like, oh, your your larynx isn't lowering wow. at all on one side. And and so I was like, okay. So my teacher said, you know, we're gonna go, we're gonna move down. We're gonna put move all of your repertoire low. Helped great. So, but that was really even on 18, being there's always this hierarchy in classical music programs where the higher voices are, <gasps> oh my gosh, you like you, there's something about it, like you want to be the soprano, you want to be a tenor. And honestly, it's based on feedback of the audience because they just are here for high notes. You can sing brilliantly mid-voice, the best singer on stage, and you just don't get the same reception. So there's this real mm. ego part of wanting to be a high voice. So coming down to control toe at 19, 18, 19 was like, oh my gosh, that felt bad. Yeah. And then it, it couldn't wrap your head around at the time I didn't have the tools, but in retrospect, it didn't mean anything. 
it was just the music I was singing. It was just in a different key. Like it didn't change who I was or in fact, I was singing much better. Right. Like it kind of, but having this really wounded feeling about having like something stripped away from me that felt so big and important. Yeah. And then it kind of started to develop because I was singing so well with the mezzo repertoire because it was mid and I was, you know, physically functioning better. I started to kind of get roles and get hats and things that people my age weren't because I was singing that repertoire really well. And I started to feel better about it. And I was like, okay, we're doing this. Like, this is happening. And then in my master's, I worked with this wonderful, really well-known Canadian mezzo, Anita Krauss, who's retired from teaching now, but she's lovely and a beautiful singer. And she was like, you know, I don't think you're a mezzo. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I had business cards, websites, email, everything branded, right? Like you start to have to kind of market yourself as a yeah. singer. And everything was this different voice. I know it doesn't sound like a big thing, but it would no, be like... No, huge, yeah. It would be like putting like Adrian Schneer, structural engineer. Yeah. When you've never studied that, you're like, what? No, I'm not a structural engineer. <laughs> I am a, like a boss. <laughs> I love so, that. Agent by the way, that's your new, your new business card's agent your boss. That's what I love doing. it. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't even to yeah. So I've never even kind of been like, oh gosh, like I was not prepared for this. Yeah. And I'm going out with the professional world from there and going, you know, realistically, the repertoire was feeling not right. And it took about, I think, two years to find a teacher, like you said, that clicked, that was working technically in a way that was working for me to kind of get yeah. where my voice really did need to develop. And we, he was like, definitely spinto, which is yeah. where I still am, mm-hmm. which is a dramatic, young dramatic soprano which, with dramatic Italian repertoire. And that fit really beautifully. And I felt so great. And that's stuck in terms of just physiologically where I am and my voice. And that's great. But then there was the whole other shift of being a singer a performer and switching back to grad students. Yes. In a different field. Mm-hmm. And in your counseling psychology program. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like kind of working toward becoming a registered psychotherapist. Yes. And the identity of going, oh, I'm a performer, professional musician. I've always been an instructor. That part's still there. And I probably will always keep some mm-hmm. students because I, I, I do really love that work. Mm-hmm. Going like, oh my gosh, like this is a different field. I can now, it's this identity shift of, performer to registered psychotherapist again and there's a lot of crossover and that's probably why I enjoy it so much because there's a lot of skills I already have still work mm-hmm. or that I've already been doing and didn't realize that's what I was doing but just kind of like it's the it's a very different identity yeah it is but the uh, one of the amazing things is that you can do both exactly just like you know people ask me like how are you a professor and you're you know running yeah. two companies and you know one's a law firm one's apply yourself and like I say, well, but I love them. So I why? like these things. And they work. They fit together yeah. and they inform yeah. each other in so many ways. Like yeah. the mission, the values, the goals of Apply Yourself has come out of all of that experience as a professor, as a student in highly competitive programs and as a lawyer in a highly stressful and intense profession. Yes. And it is only because I have all of that experience that I can do what I do in Apply exactly. Yourself. And so I think that having more than one thing is beautiful. Oh, I fully agree. It's Even so my mom much more fun. Like, can you not only do what, like, just why can't you choose one thing? I'm like, I like so many things. And, and they and work. We, yeah, they work together. And I think, I mean, just because, like you said, because you already love them all that they work or because they're all things that are related because they're, those are the things you love. Well, and I think that you also, at least for me, like I also, I also see the, the value that is inextricably linked to each of them yes. in what I do. Yes. And so it's sure like you can love a whole bunch of things, but why isn't one just a hobby? And so I think where things sort of come together is that they each inform the other. For example, my law firm, like we're, we're growing both businesses. We're growing both the law firm and Apply Yourself. And we only bring on people who have our values, who right. have our, who have an understanding of what it is that we do. And the firm is not a stressful place to work. Right. People are contacting, like I, because we are, we work in a different way. Yes. And that's only because of 
where I've been in every other facet that allows me to do that. And same with you. Yes, totally. I, the things I was experiencing and seeing in the specifically operatic industry were just not, they're not working for most people. And see, being then being an instructor, kind of people were interested in that and then somehow giving them the tools to navigate this very high pressure, stressful, sometimes dangerous place to be. Yeah. Is where I ended up with this. There's so much I want to be able to offer clients and students to kind of give them the power back to move forward in whatever direction feels best for them. That's right. And I couldn't, I can't go forward in this, in the industry I was in, in this classical without acknowledging and trying to help change what's going on that isn't working. Mm -hmm. And that's in such alignment with what we do at Apply Yourself. Yeah. It is about strategic next best choice that is in alignment with you. Yes. And that's the piece that is the hardest is what is in alignment with you. And that's where a lot of the work sits because once yes. you identify it, once you're, you're okay with it, because sometimes what feels good to you is not the traditional way. Yes. And is not maybe the way that will be externally validated. Exactly. And so you need to work on those internal validation pieces in order to accept your next best step. Yes. And so there is so much overlap in the work that you and I do mm -hmm. that I really want to learn more and hear more about the type of psychotherapy counseling mm -hmm. that you are interested in, that you're studying. Yeah. So right now we're kind of, I'm only, I'm one year in and we've done kind of a brief overview of everything and where my personal alignment is right now is with, it. I seem to lean toward person-centered therapies, just inherently my innate, which is finding self, like becoming self-actualized, mm -hmm. which means what do you want? How do you move around in the world? How do you take up the space you're in and, and why? What's meaningful to you about that? And I think that's just, it's so important and it's really hard to do on your own. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like, it's really, some people do it and that's great. Most can't because how could you, I think you just need sometimes somebody to say, oh, but what about this? Or give you permission to consider something else mm -hmm. or to look at it from a different way and kind of validate that. If you, if that's something you really want, that that's something worth looking into. Yeah. And yeah. so that's kind of in terms of psychotherapy, it's, it's like, I'll always pull tools from cross theories because there are so many useful tools. But for me, that kind of empathetic self-actualization and sitting with people while they discover that, oh my gosh, so exciting. Yeah. So exciting. It's so important. And it's, it, it gives you the tools throughout the rest of your life to keep doing it on your own. Mm hmm keep asking yourself that you'll get to the point where you have these tools and you go, you know what? I'm feeling like this about whatever. I wonder why. And then you sit there and you, and you go, oh, you know what? That's because of it. And, and you can just take that throughout your life. And then, oh my gosh, see, I can't even, my rate of speech goes up to when I know. It's so <laughs> exciting and, and so important. And the reason, like I, I, I will work with anybody of any age, I always have, but that 12 to 30 year old age group, because the brain is still creating gray matter and still developing kind of being able to find that for yourself in that timeline yeah and you come out with your brain hardwired already doing that mm -hmm. oh my gosh like that's the dream that everybody just can do that like has those tools given to them at those times yeah and you can do it again later in life mm -hmm. absolutely but it it really makes big shifts yeah when your brain is still developing and we see that even with our clients here, because much of what you're talking about, I come at from a different perspective, not the therapy perspective, but from the pr productive advancement exactly. perspective. And we work through a lot of the same choices and opinions and perspectives and everything else that, that we've been talking about. Yeah. And the, when you can tell that when somebody feels alignment, specifically when I'm, you know, in our group sessions or in my one-on-one -on -one VIPs, when we're working with on their applications in, in both gr the group and in the one-on-ones and in the Success Society also, which is our higher level coaching group coaching program, we find like often what happens is our community members 
get very emotional because they have these realizations and they realize that like, oh my God, I like, I'm now processing this because I have to. And I always say, you know, like, it's not just about the application. It's about your life because when you're doing applications properly that are in alignment with you, who you are, where you want to be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and we do all of that work, and you make realizations that really, truly you identify with and feel good to you, that is, you're, it's just, you're doing so much more than just writing your application. Exactly. And, you know, this weekend I I had one, I had a one-on-one session too, and we were working on a diversity statement for, for a law school actually. And we came up with, like, I, I really needed to learn more about this client's story. And so I asked a lot of questions. I always ask a lot of questions. And I ask questions in different ways to pull out different things. Mm. And by the end of it, and there were some tears, there were some emotions, not because anything was wrong, but because yeah. there's a lot of processing that goes on if you're doing this the r- properly. For sure. And sometimes we're afraid to feel uncomfortable. We're afraid to feel those emotions. But when you have the support, it becomes okay. Yes. So we ended up with this diversity statement that they just looked at and they were like, oh my God, you know me better than I know me. Oh. <laughs> they said. And that's like amazing, right? Like, yeah. and it was one of the best statements. It was one of the absolute, like, I think it's like one of like my top three, I think, because it was so, so real. And it's all about coming to work with me or you and be and being ready and willing to do the work. Yeah. Well, and it can be really scary to be seen or heard, right? As well, like to really finally realize that, oh my gosh, maybe somebody's actually seeing me or somebody's really hearing me and it's exciting and it's emotional, but it can be really scary. Yeah. That puts you in a vulnerable position. And that's kind of, to bring it back to singing, that's what happens with a lot of people singing. Yeah. You get really heard, you're really feeling open and people really see you and it's all out there for people to kind of make a decision about. Mm -hmm just scary and so to have like you said that support and that empowerment to kind of go you know this is who I am I like it you don't have to Mm -hmm. I have other people who really like it it kind of gives you you, like you like you were saying like you get to choose yeah and that's so important and so exciting and one of the things that came out of that discussion was that you know the true trauma that this person had experienced they hadn't and this person's young, right? Yeah. And so, as many of our clients are. And so a lot, so there was a lot of processing that was happening as this discussion was happening. And what I said, one of the things that I said at the, at sort of the, sort of nearing the end is, you know, your hardship, plural, <laughs> your trauma. Yeah. And the fact that you're able to process it and communicate it from the scar, not from the wound, is going to be somebody else's inspiration. Wow. And that was really important for them. And it's true. Totally. It's true because it helps a person see themselves not as a victim of the circumstances, but as an empowered, resilient, resilient human being with agency and autonomy and control over their life, their choices, what is in alignment with them and their ability to not just like move on, but their ability to actually use it for good, which is exactly what they wanted to do. And that's what everything was coming from for them. But framing it was really hard because it hadn't been processed. And so this is like part of the self-actualization that you're talking about that is so important and why our work is in such alignment with each other. And cool. so I, th- I think that being able to help and support and strategize in this way that is so productive for somebody's advancement, like it's not just chatting about it for the purpose of chatting about it. Right. Like it's so that they can move forward productively. Yes. In the, in the way that they want to. Yes. That is so vital to both of us in our yes. work. Yeah. Very yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some really exciting things 
Yes. Coming down the pipeline. Firstly, you're coming back. Oh, yeah. So, wait. <laughs> we have way too much to talk about. I this was just... You and I, we get in trouble for how much we can talk. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. And we certainly have, like, this is a very sort of introductory, preliminary discussion, and we are coming back for more. And we may have some surprises together down the line. So stay okay. tuned for that. Yeah. So really. Where can we find you? We are on Instagram at PBNJ Music Studio, where you can find information about lessons, masterclasses, and adjudication. Amazing. Yeah. And you run your music school with Peter Bass. I do. Who has been on this podcast before. Yeah. <laughs> and so shout out to Peter if you're listening. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Obviously, we welcome both of you back anytime. Thank you. And yes, if you are looking for an amazing set of voice teachers, this is the school for you. Absolutely. Like I'm, I've been there for years. So, <laughs> so what? Over a decade. <laughs> not now. at all biased. It's fine. <laughs> not at all. I'm not biased at all. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for, for coming on and I cannot wait for next time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and thank yeah. you so much for listening and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.